because I just came back from Primavera Sound in Barcelona. I'm fresh off the plane. Um, a day. I've been here a day now in London, right? So I'm still a bit groggy. I still got a bit of a plane um, hangover or whatever you call it. What's something you called? Oh, jet lag. Plane hangover. Imagine calling it a plane hangover. Crazy. Um, can't find the words to say simple things. But yeah, I've got a jet. I've got a bit of jet lag, primarily because we got the we got the earliest train. We got the earliest train. See, Jesus Christ, man! You've been on a plane for so long, and your head is throbbing with all that bass and beats. So you can't even put sentences together. Let me start again. We got the earliest plane out from Barcelona, and it was um the six or six no just before seven a.m. plane, right? So it was at six fifty, and it arrived back in London at about. Set 8 8 a.m. So I got back home around 9 30, which was amazing. So on paper, it was a good deal, right? Good idea to do it, but the actual practicalities of it were not so great. Number one, because the festival actually ended on a Sunday, even though no one goes on a Sunday, we didn't end up going on a Sunday anyway, but it actually ends on a Sunday. So then, if you end up leaving the first thing on a Monday morning, that means you have to be very well behaved on Sunday, or at the late, at the least. What you could do is just maybe you stay up the whole day, right? Just stay up, uh, kind of nap really, kind of nap until late afternoon on the Sunday and then just stay up Sunday evening until Sunday morning and then kind of get your sleep on the plane or on the train um, or the bus back to whatever your city you're in, right, from the airport. But as you guys, I'm sure, are aware, sleeping on, a, on an airplane is a lot harder than you think it is, right? Especially if you're not one of those people that sleeps at a moment's notice, right? My mum's like that. She can sleep. Um, in a football stadium, right? She could sleep at a Slipknot concert. Like, she could just go lights out and she's completely flat out. But for anyone that's like a normal human, as I am, you can probably fall asleep anywhere, but you still need somewhere comfortable to fall asleep, right? And a Ryanair seat or any low-budget airline that goes across um, or any kind of domestic flight airline that you have in your country, right, it's not probably the best idea to sleep in because mostly, especially the budget airlines we have in Europe, uh, they don't have reclining chairs, right? For the for the for the most for for number one, uh, the seats are not that comfortable. They they squeeze as many seats as they can into a very small plane, and you end up in this weird crooked position where you can't really sleep that well. And usually, because it's June or the end of May, uh, if you've gone, if you went a couple of, if you went when I left uh, a couple of weeks ago or last week. You're usually on a plane with a whole host of people, right? So from anywhere between someone like your age, uh, someone a little bit older, parents, families, and ultimately kids, especially really young kids. I'm not really sure why parents like to take their kids on holiday on planes and shit. I don't really know what that that thing is about. I guess if you're with your family, you want to kind of probably, you probably want to go traveling with your kids. I guess, I guess that makes sense. And maybe get someone to look after your kids when you're away isn't the best, isn't as easy as it sounds. Or maybe you just don't leave your kids with strangers. I don't know what it is, but... I don't really get the idea of taking kids on a plane uh, at that age, especially when they're like under 10 and shit. They just, everything about a plane just pisses them off, right? So they're, they're crying all the time or they're just fidgeting around. Um, and you know how kids are, they're just always like talking and shit and making noises, which is not really the most, um, it's not the most advantageous environment that you'd want when you're on a plane and you're deprived of some sort of sleep, right? You want kind of some peace and some sort of zen. But that doesn't happen when you're on a plane, at the end of June, beginning of June, be- ending, ending of May, beginning of June, July, all those summer months are probably the worst time you want to get on a plane because literally everyone's on it. Especially if it's a flight that is cheap, right? If it's a that is cheap, then usually everyone else is buying that flight too because it's cheap. Um, I think my outgoing flight from London was like 100 quid and my flying back from Barcelona was like 55 pounds. So it was a flight that everyone wanted. But now I understand why people come back on a Sunday, especially because the festival runs from Thursday to Sunday. But effectively, it's really only Thursday to Saturday. Or if you're really strict, you say it's only Friday to Saturday. Um, I saw people come back as early as they can because, you know, you just want to get out of that place and just kind of, you know, rest and kind of get yourself recalibrated. But it's going to take me a couple of days maybe to get myself recalibrated. It might take like a workout, which I'm going to do later on today i'm gonna to go for a bit of a run and just kind of get get a bit of a sweat on have a shower wake up early in the morning tomorrow and go to the gym and just just kind of get back into my routine because at the moment i'm still feeling a little bit groggy but overall man what an amazing 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 trip i went to primavera with some friends we had an amazing amazing time and i don't know man can i can i just say something honestly and put it out there just be you know just just be my honest uh straight to the point self i think primavera sounds the best festival i've ever been to in my life Hands down, I don't care, man. Best festival ever. I went to Camp Flogna. I've been to Download Festival, the Metal Festival. I've been to Reading and Leeds. 
I've been to Love Box. I haven't been to Best of All or Glastonbury, right? So anyone's out that kind of big ones in the UK I haven't been to. I've been to Tea in the Park. I've been to the one in, what's the one in Hyper? I've got the name of it, right? But um, I've been to a few festivals, right? And I can, I can comfortably say that Primavera is my most favorite festival to go to and probably the best festival I've been to in one. It's such a magical, magical venue, I think, in general. Um, the layout of Parc de la Forum is just great. It's just so uh, conducive for a good festival. I think I mentioned before I left in episode 73 of the Exodus Zinger Show, which you can check out before you listen to this one, that it's not the best festival to go and to try and see as many people as you can within a given space of time, right? Because the stages are really, really spread across. They're spread across at a massive, massive site. So it takes about... I'd say it takes about 10 to 15, 10 to 20 minutes to get from one stage to the other. Maximum 20 minutes, right? So it's not like, usually when you go to a festival, they're kind of like, uh, let's see my book, right? Usually a festival is like kind of like in a U shape, like kind of like, and like, like kind of square, if you listen to audio, it's kind of like in a square rectangle shape, right? So you have the main stages like along the edges of the square and you can kind of run around, right? That's usually how the festival la- layout is done. But Primavera Festival is spread out across a massive site that's like um they do loads of events there i'm not sure what kind of events they do something they someone mentioned it the other day but i kind of forgot what events they were but it's a massive site that kind of looks like for lack of a better term it looks like loads of semi-professional football stadiums it's kind of linked together in like a concrete park you know semi-professional football stadiums where it has like the the field and it has one stand on the side of the pitch that's how part of the forum looks so that one stand is sort of like an a, 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 a kind of a look it kind of looks like an order uh, like a coliseum like a weird sort of like roman cathedral right like the kind of steps that you can sit down on and then they're kind of joined together in like this park sort of shape so you have to kind of travel across bridges and go on and go down ramps and shit to get different areas and stuff and it's right next to the uh, the water so like the coast next to the beach so all the djs kind of play along the next to the beach and there's a stage kind of next to the beach too it's just an amazing 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 site but i think the site itself even though it's really big and really expensive and it takes ages to get anywhere especially when it's busy especially when it's like a time when everyone's playing or especially when it's someone really popular playing right i still think it's there's nothing there's nothing there's just nothing that comes close to being at primavera festival that's just especially seeing the stages from the top of the stairs downwards like there was one day i think there might have been a saturday when black madonna was playing towards the end right and she was playing a dj set right on a on the main stage of a festival and we were at the top of the stairs and all you could see were heads and hands you couldn't see one square of concrete where it was free where you could kind of like move in and kind of like jump in there there was no way there was no space it was just a sea of people. And I was like, oh my God. And Black Madonna was kind of performing. I feel like, I think it was like a cage. I think it might have been a cage was performing behind. And it was insane. I was like, imagine DJing in front of that many people, right? With that level of intensity, with that level, with that level of, with that love in the air. And just everyone's having a good time. And it's so hot and warm. And oh my bloody God. That's what basically dreams are made of. I was like, Jesus Christ. That is amazing. That's what made, I just, it kind of, it just took me. It, it took me a while to kind of catch my breath watching it. Honestly, it was amazing, Re- really, really awe inspiring, and just the general organization of it. Like, um, there's a few searches at the gate before you get in. You can't take any liquids, of of course, because usually you know festivals have their own drink partnership partnerships with you know who they kind of link up with, and they want to make sure that you spend money in the festival so they can kind of get some money back. Because I'm assuming a lot of these festivals, it's hard to make money back on, especially when you're booking really big acts. You have to pay a lot in booking fees. You have to pay a lot for licenses in order to kind of hire the venue. Uh, local authorities going back and forth with them. So I'm, I'm assuming the money that they do make is primarily through their merch, the the sell, the food, and all the other stuff on the kind of add on stuff that you get there. But when you go there, the searches are quite minimal. They don't really pat you down. They kind of search your bag, make sure you don't have any weapons or anything stupid in there. Um, if you have a, you can, you're bringing that to bring in a water bottle because they have water fountains. But then, if you had, I'd say, the so only slight I'll say about Primavera Festival, there's not enough water fountains uh, located in the areas where the stages are, especially the main stages. So, for instance, um, when I was watching Arctic Monkeys and Lord, you can imagine, right? You're watching Arctic Monkeys and Lord, Lord, who I've not seen before, right? Um, live, I like some of her stuff. I've got a couple of her albums on iTunes or whatever, but she's an amazing, amazing performer live. Like, if you haven't seen Lord live, please do see her. You will, 
if you're not a fan, I'm sure she'll convert you. Like, she was amazing live. Great, great performance. She was wearing this a great dress. It's sort of like a um, tutu kind of like frilly thing with a bit see-through paneling and some uh, Nike trainers. I, I overheard a couple of girls saying, oh my God, it's so amazing that she's wearing trainers. You know what I mean? She was super comfortable on stage. She had these dancers, choreographers who were dancing behind her. She joined in a bit too. She had them lift her up and whatever. But it was, it was amazing. I fucking loved it, right? Um, great, great time. But then that stage, because it was one, it was on the main stages, right? So it had the most, the most, it had the the biggest kind of space in between each stage where a lot of people could kind of stand around because I'm assuming Lord and and Arctic Monkeys were probably one, some of the biggest draws on the lineup. But there wasn't a, a a water fountain next to that place. You had to go really, you had to go all the way back to kind of the, the front of the arena or the front of the of the layout in order to kind of get anywhere. To kind of, sorry, in order to get any water. So I think that's the only problem I have with Pirin Vera. They need to install more water fountains next to them, especially the main stages. I don't expect them to do it at every stage, but especially it's in the main stages, they definitely need to um, put more water fountains there. I guess the only pushback they'll probably tell you is that the water fountains at Pirin Vera aren't water fountains that Pirin Vera Festival have installed. They're, Vera, they're, fest, they're water fountains that are already part of the site. So maybe it might be a little bit hard to kind of get other fountains done, but I think that would be that would make it perfect. Um, but then obviously that if you don't if you don't have water fountains at the stage, you probably have to buy a water at the at the at the bar and stuff, which is a bit annoying because it's two euros and blah blah blah. blah. But that's the only slight I'd have on it in general. And if I'm being completely honest, too, the bar staff were not the quickest. Although they were super friendly, super chatty, uh, really fun once you got their attention. But they weren't the quickest, I'd say. But i say generally in Spain anyway. If you've been to Madrid or you've been to anywhere in Spain. I've been to Madrid a couple of times, and Barcelona a couple of times. It's safe to say that that service isn't, uh, it's not unique, right? It's like a representative, I think representative of like how it is in general in uh, Spain. Like they kind of take their time, you know, like nothing's a rush. But when you're in a festival... Especially when I was waiting to get water before Skepta came on. And then, you know, he kind of performed two tracks whilst I was waiting in the bar. But, you know, had some fun. Made sure I danced and stuff before the I got my drinks served to me. But overall, an amazing festival, an amazing time. Um, great organisation. Not that much searching. Uh, the security guards are not overbearing. They mostly... Uh, they mostly stand at the front of the at the front of the arena, making sure uh, nothing crazy is going on down there. Um, the actual site, you don't really see that much heavy security. There was more security. I, I remember last year. I remember seeing a lot, a, a couple of armed guards and stuff last year. I'm not sure what happened last year. Something happened in Spain. Terrorist attack. Maybe something happened. I don't remember. But I, remember, I remember seeing a lot more armed guards last year. So this year there wasn't as many armed guards. It was a little bit more low key. But it, there was a lot more Londoners. A lot more people from the UK were at this festival this year than last year. Um, I've heard a couple people complaining about that, but for me, I'm not that bothered about it because I think the lineup of, at Primavera is going to attract everyone. Like, it's one of the best lineups you're going to get in Europe. Um, if you're not someone that's fond of paying over the price, over if you're not if you're not fond of playing too much money to go to a festival in the UK, especially when Love Box and other places like Wireless are selling out so quickly and the resale of of the tickets is really high, or the lineup isn't as eclectic or wide-ranging as some pre rare festival is and i think pre rare is a really good bargain like what fl my flight was like 150 my ticket was 189 the airbnb collectively we must have paid like 160 each so you're looking at about 300 pounds just under 400 pounds all in to go to a festival no including spending money of course but to go to a festival which is a brilliant because wireless festival on the re on the resale they're already going for about three they've got i've, I've seen some for around 300 to 400 pounds right Love box is about 138, 70 something pound a day. Not including the amount of money you're gonna spend at the bar or whatever you're gonna get afterwards. So I think Primavera is way it, it has priced itself really well in terms of um their festivals around the world, especially when you count in that even though there's three main days or maybe two main days if you're really being uh pedantic about it, you can still go to Primavera Festival for all five days. You can go for the whole entire week if you want to. You can go, you can do that, which is fucking amazing. Um and you could get a real, real bang for your buck. I remember last time we went on Thursday, they had loads of like people that uh, we had, they had loads of um, people that you might have not heard of, like a George Benson and a couple other playing on Thursday of last year. But it's a bit more of a, a bit more of a quiet day, right? So kind of like um, a few more like um, what would you call them? Unknown acts were playing on a Thursday, right? Kind of warmer acts were playing on Thursday, but it's still a good time to kind of get yourself um, in 
kind of in the vibe of Primavera and then you kind of ramp it up by the Friday, by the Saturday, by the Sunday, you kind of wind down, you go back home. But overall, amazing organization. Um, everything's easy to do. Picking up your wristband is a simple, simple, simple thing to do. I'm going to cut this off later. But yeah, here's my wristband, as you can tell. Primavera Festival, stand up, stand up, stand up. Um, but yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing performance. Everyone was amazing. Um... What can I say? Um, what else can I recommend you about Premier Rare Festival? Yeah, performances. So, performances. Lord was the one that surprised me the most, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Lord. I've liked her from probably from her first couple of albums. I've been a big fan of hers in general. But I thought her music was a little bit too, you know, boring for me in that respect, right? But of course, when Lord's when anyone's performing a live set, they usually perform their best their best hits or that span you know their whole discography. So she came out there and absolutely blew it out of the water. Uh, her performance was amazing. I loved her outfit, like I mentioned before. She had like this blue kind of tutu dress on, which I'm trying. I'm gonna, let me see if I can get it up maybe on the internet now. Uh, I'm gonna type in on Google Lord Primavera. She was amazing, amazing live. Um, I would also well yeah she was amazing live she performed really really well I think everyone really kind of vibed off her she had these dancers behind her who were doing this amazing choreography that she was also kind of taking part in which was great to see um, oh she covered uh, Frank Ocean's uh, Frank Ocean song Lost uh, Lost 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 like that was fucking sick to see I'm going to play this now on, on, the, on the old YouTube. So if you're listening to this on, on iTunes podcast, then please head over to a link that I'm going to pop in the description of the podcast and click that and you can check out the podcast. As ever, uh, subscribe to my channel and share it whatever turn on notification you know all that standard youtube shit but i'm gonna play it now on youtube so you guys can uh check it out but lord before we get primavera was banging um so yeah i'm gonna play it for you now you can over here lord playing right now let's get this up there you go fast forward a little bit Up for it a little bit now again. Let's see this. Yeah, I love this bit where she was like, where they kind of lifted her up. Look at this. Let me go back a bit as well. I, this is the best bit performance I love where they kind of did this choreography and they kind of lifted her up on stage. It was so sick. So yeah, Lola was amazing. She performed live too. So like no backing track, just her singing, which was fucking great to see. I know I keep banging on about this, but because I because I'm so enthusiastic about this new generation of hip hop acts, right? I think Playboy Carti and people like Louis Vuitton are really, really, really um elevating and maybe expanding the sound of hip hop to a, a a really different audience and the sound that they're using is is just amazing right especially when you come from a traditional sort of like hip-hop background hearing a playboy Carter or louis vert and the energy that they kind of 
they kind of give to the audience and the vibe and the, just everything about the melodies and the lyrics they use and the ad libs. I really want them to kind of take it a step further with their live performances because at the moment when you're getting with these guys is that you're getting them just have a DJ play their play their MP3 of a song that you've heard already, right? Something that you've heard that you've got on your iPod. And it's just like lowering down the vocals or turning down the hi-hats or whatever, or the highs or the mids, and then rapping over it. And I think it, they're just selling themselves short. And also as an audience member, you're not getting the full live experience. Part of the full live experience is to hear someone, is to hear the crackle in someone's voice. You remember the old video of Cassie performing live at some place, right? And everyone was taking a piss of her because she couldn't sing. I like that video, right? Because I was expecting Cassie to, to sound like her MP3 or to sound like the CD. I wanted to hear all the breaths and all the pantings and all the her trying to pace herself throughout performance. That's what makes a live performance great, right? That's what makes live CDs awesome. Um, when you, I remember hearing a live CD of who is it? It might have been Interpol, right? Where they're kind of uh, berating someone in a crowd who's kind of booing or chucking something. Or no, a guy that's kind of touching up a girl, I think, or something, right? And you overhear the guy saying, oh, like, if you do this again, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you, right? And he's kind of whispering to somebody else behind the stage and he's talking to someone else in the part of the band. And it kind of gives the live album a real feel, a real, a real vibe. You kind of feel like you're there, right? So live performances are kind of meant to be a little bit clumsy, a little bit rough around the edges, but these hip-hop acts, I don't know, just be pure laziness and because they just want to bank all the money, right? Because I'm assuming if you, the more, the more production or the more real the performance is, the more money you're going to have to invest in maybe getting a sound engineer, maybe getting uh, a band to come and play with you. But if ever you've watched uh, Jimmy Fallon and you've had, and you've seen The Roots play uh, a live instrumentation of a version of some people, or someone's uh, tune, so it's, a lot, it's always a really it's always good isn't it right or if you've ever watched uh npr tiny desks right uh that they do performances wise it's always amazing even when the song isn't that great because you get to see the life you get to see the live aspects of it the person doing it in this rawest truest form right in front of a live audience and lord did that at the period of festival and she was fucking great i didn't expect that much of, of i didn't expect so much of her not because i don't think she's talented but because it's not someone i really paid that much attention to but lord was amazing so i'm definitely gonna keep an eye on her even more than before and in terms of songwriting man she's very very talented isn't she i think very very underrated um as a songwriter so yeah lord was fucking sick um skepta uh if you don't i'm gonna go a little bit over the, over the place i'm not gonna do it by day because that's you know whatever um Skepta was great too. Skepta performed last year. He was one of the main acts that performed last year. But this time around, because Migos uh, cancelled last minute, which was a, such a bummer. Um, when I was arriving to the Airbnb, my friend had texted me and said, basically, oh, and kind of said, oh, you want to guess what? But Migos cancelled. And I don't know why they cancelled. I don't know why it happened. Um, I, I'm assuming my house has to do with Offset's car accident. But I, 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 my friend also let me know that they were performing the, the, the couple of days later in some festival in Paris or something like that. So maybe it wasn't that, but I've heard through the great that they're supposed to miss their connecting flight. So they weren't able to come to print Barcelona on time. But that was a huge bummer because I thought seeing Migos in a live setting like Primavera would have been great. And a lot of people that were at the festival who weren't necessarily big fans of Migos wanted to see them anyway because that's the beauty of, of Primavera, right? You get to see uh, Ariel Pink, you get to see ASAP Rocky and you get to see Talented Crater and you get to see DJ Cos all in the same venue. So that would have been great to see, but they they cancelled last minute, and it kind of follows a bit of a temp, a bit of a pattern now. And it last the year bef last year was Frank Ocean, this year was Migos. Like every year, since some, some someone from the hip hop R&B community always tends to like kind of you know what's that word called uh, cancel, which is annoying as fuck. But hey, what can you do? Um, so Skepta was great. He got booked in last minute supposedly, and he ended up flying over loads of his friends. He flew over Suspect, and they performed the Look Alive remix. Uh, he flew over Shorty. Um, who else came over? Du -du 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 -du. I forgot the other person that came over. But yeah, he performed a whole melody of tracks. He performed Pure Water, which was great. Pure Water and Lost of Ice. Du -du 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 -du. That, that, that was great. Um, he performed a new track that's happened, that's gonna look that's gonna be out soon as well, which I don't know the name of. Uh, he was great. I loved his outfit. He had his main tracksuit on and his new uh, Air Maxes that he put uh, that collaboration he put out recently. Uh, Sorry about the runny nose, but yeah, the hay fever is back again. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, oh, Arctic Monkeys, right? Arctic Monkeys were fucking incredible. I'm not sure if you've heard the new album from the Arctic Monkeys, but the, the new album is great, right? A lot of people aren't really fond of it because it's it's it's, it's definitely veers off from 
what you've heard of them before, right? It's definitely a, a sonic exploration. It's not something that you've kind of heard before from the Arctic Monkeys, but their live performance at Primavera was out of this fucking world, right? They had um, they had the monkeys in neon lights and behind them in the stage, and then on each screen they had like kind of like a black and a really grainy black and white video that was showing. Again, that's a great setup I like, right? Um, so Primavera Festival. It's a big... Usually the main stages are really big, but everyone kind of packs them so you can't get there, right? They're usually sitting there quite early on and they're kind of waiting for their fair act to come on. So what they do is a good job of is that same, similar like Coachella, similar to, I'm, I'm assuming, most big festivals. They have massive screens that show the artists so you can basically see what they're doing on stage, which was amazing. But imagine seeing the whole festival. You saw... I saw uh, different artists do it different ways. Like uh, Licky Lee had like an installation that like, kind of these eyes curtains on a stage or sometimes reflected on the on the camera on the screens and then sometimes it'll be her on the screen but for the most part all the videos were in color so then to see it in black and white it was just like um, aesthetically it was just amazing to see by your eyes like shit everything looks so much cooler in black and white and it was an, and it was at night time too so the, the the stage lights were mostly quite dim with the except for the neon monkey at the back of the stage and it was really, really low lit. And then whenever they came to like a chorus or like a crescendo of the music, it would, it would light up really, really, really bright. And then the kind of, the screens would kind of dim down. It was just amazing to see. But Arctic Monkeys, probably, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not, I'm probably not saying anything new here, but they probably have, might have one of the best discographies and one of the best set lists that you could ever get at the festival. Like, wow, 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 wow. Uh, let me see if I can get a performance up here from the playing at Primavera. I think someone just filmed their own video. I'm not sure if they told they got live performance up on here yet. Uh, let's see here. Can you hear this? Here we go. Alex Turner's the coolest frontman in the world. Don't tell me nothing else, okay? I don't want to hear it. Alex Turner for life. Let's get this up on the full screen. So that's Arctic Monkeys performing One Point Perspective at Primavera Sound Festival. Um, another thing I realised about Arctic Monkeys too, about Alex Turner, he's very good at keeping his voice in a particular vocal range. It doesn't, he doesn't strain his voice too much. That was amazing to hear live. Like he didn't, there's a tendency, I don't know, I would think so, right? Just from not being a performer and not having any time on stage and just the kind of my kind of silly monkey brain. But there's a part of you that wants to shout or wants to really kind of scream and go for it right on the stage you kind of lose your voice a bit maybe it's the kind of a uh, amateurish side of being a performer right you don't really have the experience you haven't had the ten thousand hours of performing and like i'd imagine they performed in like various shitty bars and snooker clubs and shit before they became the arctic monkeys right so but he's very good at keeping it in a particular range he never he never strays from that range he keeps his voice in and it's very very evident when you see him live it's amazing to hear sometimes there's some parts where the music is even louder than his own voice right it kind of uh it kind of creeps up and there's a bit there's like a, he's just he's just underneath uh the top layer of whatever lead guitar he's playing or the drums and shit it's very very strange but live it really really works and it kind of lends itself to you singing along to it right um which i think was amazing and yeah man like it was absolutely, it was probably rammed the same way I saw Black Madonna. It was crazy. You couldn't, we could, we were so far from the stage, it wasn't even funny how far back we were. It was insane, in fucking insane. Like, 
there's two stages, right? Where Lord was, I think the say and the and I think maybe Ray or the preverse. I don't know what stage it was, right? I think say and something else, right? So they're kind of facing each other, and we were probably further, we were probably closer to the other stage than we were to that stage. We were right at the back, so so far back, and it was just ram packed. And even when even where we were standing, we were kind of like at the back, and then by the time the set started, and I looked back, I couldn't see the stage behind me anymore. There were so many people behind me. It was, so, it was just blocking the whole path. So more people joined in. But in general, P Arctic Monkeys probably got the best reception, I think, in the whole festival. I think they appealed to a wide swath of uh, music listeners. I saw people in the crowd, you know, that ranged from, you know, mums and dads to real, to, to young kids, to people like me. It was a real, real wide-ranging um base of people so that must have been fully gratifying for arctic monkeys and stuff and just seeing him at that time at night uh alex turner wearing that amazing white outfit the fucking black monkeys at the i mean the the neon sign of monkeys at the back just so sick i absolutely loved it so they were great who else was amazing oh asap rocky performed asap rocky was sick what a stage man what a state what a performer what a what what a star let's say Asap Rocky is a star. Like, no, no, no holds barred. I know a lot of people have a lot of things to say about Asap Rocky's musical output. He seems to be concentrating a lot more on his fashion than he does on his music. I think Joe Budden mentioned on his podcast the other day, is Asap Rocky, is Asap Rocky, is Asap Rocky better, is, does Asap Rocky wear clothes better than he makes music or something along that kind of lines, which is quite, you know, disparaging and rude, but you kind of get the gist of what he's saying, right? He's never, for probably the closest he's got to making a cohesive album is probably testing. And a lot of people don't really like that either, right? It hasn't, it hasn't been a resounding success with all the critics and fans and shit. But there's parts of testing that really, really work. Like, you can tell he's slowly getting to the sound that he kind of wants to develop and hone and kind of take on, right? I'd say LSD and uh, the song with Rod Stewart were kind of a uh, testament to kind of where he wants to go direction-wise. And I'd say uh, testing has a lot more of those ingredients in that album than any other thing that he's done beforehand but he just needs to find a way of extrapolating it and kind of uh maybe quality control i'm not sure if it's quality control or maybe it's just i don't know what it is but he needs to be able to put together a, an album of between i say 10 to 12 tracks 10 or 10 to 14 even right of just solid album because so far sometimes his album kind of drop off the face of the earth uh after maybe track six or track seven right after the middle track it kind of gets a bit wobbly but I understand Star I said Rocky's star appeal because if you were at the show, right, and or at Festival Festival and you saw Isaac Rocky perform and you saw reception that he got, especially from the girls, you'd say this guy is definitely a star. There's no way he can lose. Like I saw a girl next to me when he was performing, when he started performing his set, who started crying, like full on crying and shaking in, in hysterics. It was insane. Like, I've not seen a reception like that in my life. Like, I've seen him performing. Every time the camera zoomed on his face and he kept smiling and he had his bloody diamonds all over his ears and his chains glistening and his kind of diamond and his tooth and shit. Girls were swooning all over the place. I, don't, I think some of them weren't even listening to what he was saying. They were just staring at him. They were just, girls just, like, gasping. Like, you know that face that uh, Lionel Richie made when um, uh, Kanye performed All Day Nigger at the Brit Awards? Just like... Like a fish, like like a goldfish, just gold, <laughs> gold me for air. It was sick to see. Like Asap Rocky's a star. Like don't tell me nothing. Go 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 to a live performance of his and look at the girls how they react to him. It's just amazing to see. And plus he's got all the other big tracks in his catalog, like LSD, uh, the song with Rod Stewart. That's that was that got a really big reception. I was surprised how big reception that it got. Um, Asap Rocky was a great performer. That was really really good to see. And another one that was fucking sick was Tyler the Creator. Tyler the Creator fucking smashed it at Premium Burst Sound. He had an amazing stage where the whole backdrop was sort of uh, green screeny, but not really like a digital screen. So every track it changed. So And there was different kind of ramps and, and platforms. So he was lying down on one bit during one bit of performance when you're performing boredom. And it kind of turned into like a green field with like trees and shit. You know how he does his stuff, right? He, he loves nature. He loves flowers, whatever. And every back, the backdrop changes recording according to each track and it was fucking sick like it, it changed so well that the friend i was with actually thought it was part of the stage design but it wasn't it was just like he had ramps in different places that made it look like he was lying on a hill when he wasn't uh like he was standing on something he wasn't like it was amazing it's uh taylor creator was fucking sick performance uh i enjoyed that who else was good saw a bit of ariel pink that was great too um he performed really really well saw a bit of arctic monkeys Saw a couple of DJs perform. Uh, we saw 
um, I'm DJing, right, um, from Innovision. That was great, but I think I mentioned it before a couple of times, but I'm not really a fan of seeing DJs perform at festivals. I just don't think it works. Um, being someone that's a huge fan of electronic music, being someone who DJs, the, I DJ myself, right? I'm going to be DJing next, actually, at the 24th of June at the Heathcote Star, a bar in Leightonstone. That's 334 Leightonstone High Road. Check me out at accidentozinga.com. I'll pull up the flyer very, very soon. But someone that DJs and goes out a lot and does the whole uh, clubbing tourism stuff, right? I go to Berlin to go uh, and go and see certain DJs play at, you know, some of the world's famous festivals such as Club Division there, Berger and all that stuff, wherever it may be. I think there's something very special about going into a dark room and hearing someone play music for an hour or or two, right? There's something very special about that. Um, and I just don't think you can recreate that in a festival environment. I just don't think it works, especially when there's bands and shit playing. Maybe a festival that leans specifically more to DJs, like uh, like Sona or like other festivals that we have in London. I forgot the names of them, but there's a couple I have in London that are very DJ heavy. Maybe they would work because, like Glastonbury, I'm sure they have uh, they had that stage in Glastonbury called NYC Down Low, right, where they invite loads of like old school house and disco DJs to come and sort of like recreate the sort of like hacienda, the loft, that kind of era of uh, disco and house and all that kind of Larry Devine shit, right? And it works because it's sort of like in a tent. It's kind of like in its own little building. It's not like in an open plan area. And they had this stage. At Pima Vera, I've got the name of it where most of you just were playing at next to the beach. That was sort of underneath this sort of like gazebo, this sort of like tent. But it was next to a big bar, next to a massive toilet, and there's also room for people to sit down this kind of floor. And it was really weird to see really big DJs, like causes, whatever, banging out absolute smashes on that set, right? Like playing an amazing set and just a whole group of girls sitting in a circle and just gossiping about what happened last week at work. Like just, just sitting there right on the floor, right? Talking and doing their own thing. It was just weird. It, it, I mean, no one was really like paying attention or being looked in or there'll be a guy on the side like just nodding away, right? Just like just sitting down somewhere. But the rave aspect of it didn't really work that well. Um, so it kind of, you felt the time when you were sit, watching a DJ, you felt the time drag a little bit. And also the sound kind of disp uh, uh, dissipates or like spreads across the, the, the kind of area. It doesn't really feel well. Like it doesn't feel great. I think when a band's playing, and it sounds sort of like spreads around. You kind of catch a vibe. Like I remember, that's how I heard. That's why I knew Ariel Pink was playing, right? Because I heard the music as I was walking through uh, the Primavera Sound uh, Festival site, and I was like, oh yeah, Ariel, Ariel Pink's on, isn't it? Bam, run to the stage. But when like you hear like a, a, ha a house track playing and it's kind of spreading across, you just don't. It, it, it just sounds like something you'd, you'd hear in a shop, right? I don't know. There's no. It doesn't really grab you to for for, for lack of a better term. Maybe a live set would work better, like a uh, Henrik Schwartz or whatever. That one might work a little bit better, you know, like um, actually editing a track for as they're playing along. My, maybe that, that might work. I know my friends mentioned that Mac, M Mount Kimby was really good uh, live as a DJ as well. He played a really good set. So maybe that might work. Fortex probably was really good, but I missed him. I didn't see him. But for the DJ that I saw at the time that I was there, I didn't really think it worked. I think it worked really well with Black Madonna. But Black Madonna, the stage that she was on, was sort of like uh, it kind of had people hemmed in. It was a it was a kind of the stage next to I don't know what stairs what the stairs were but there was a, a stage that was sort of like where the main stage where DJ Coco played at the end is like the kind of like the end set and it was kind of like a triangle so imagine the stage was at the point of the triangle and the crowd was like at the base of the triangle so you were kind of locked in it was sort of like a locked in crowd a locked in uh, arena kind of thing and then along the side of the triangle like on that side that was like um, oh, along one of the flat sides that's where the bar is so there was nowhere right, there was nowhere to kind of like get get away. You kind of it kind of kept the energy all in one place, and it kind of looked. And from where I was sitting at the top of the stairs, it looked really vibey down there, more so than the other stage next to the beach, where everyone was kind of wondering, taking a piss around the corner, chatting to their friends about someone at work they don't like. Jamie eating a hot dog. It was a bit weird to see that happening, but overall, um, it was a fucking tight 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 festival and i cannot wait to go back again like i mentioned before i think it's a great idea to go to these kind of things especially if you have a group of friends that you don't necessarily see that often i usually see my friends i i see my friends a lot more often than, than, than i than i uh had done in the past but mostly because of the festivals right because uh the festivals kind of give us um it kind of reignites the friendship again and you end up hanging out more often um but yeah what a great place to go to with friends i i can't recommend it anymore any any any, any highly really 
you hear a lot of people speaking English there, but you also hear a lot of Spanish speaking people that go to Primavera, especially if, imagine if you live in Spain, like it's not that far to probably travel there by car. Um, it's a great city to eat, great city to drink. Um, there's a beach, which is amazing as well. You can kind of hop into the hop on the beach. Uh, in the morning, I know a couple of people in our group went went to the beach, but I didn't, of course, because, you know, don't care about beaches. But I know some people did go to the beach, especially in the mornings until the afternoon, and then came back, had a shower, and then headed out to the festival. And in general, just like I said, well-organized, a great place to be. Um, everyone was really cool and chill. There was no dickheads at all. Everyone was having such a good time. Loads of great banter to be had with loads of other different individuals. And just, just a good time, man. A fucking good, good time. And I highly recommend it. Primavera gets a fucking 10 out of 10 from me. And I can't wait. I cannot wait to go back next year. So uh, every, to everyone that kind of put that thing together, to all the organizers, all the artists, all the sponsors, everyone, like, you did an amazing, amazing job. The merch, too, at Primavera was fucking awesome. Uh, my friend bought a hoodie. That was great, which I kind of regret not getting. But the merch was great, which is, you know, imagine uh, festival merch being any good. Like, it's fucking awesome. Good festival merch. Um, yeah, great success. And I can't wait to be back there again next year. That was that was mostly my trip.